Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. Today we're going to talk about the Particle Tool. This can be found in the Dynamics section of Maya, which you can find in this pull-down menu here. Animation, Polygon, Services, Dynamics. And then we have the Particles menu, which I'll break off with that little dotted line. And then the very first item is Particle Tool. So under Particles, Particle Tool, then we go into the Options. So this is a tool as opposed to a command. It shows up in our tool settings options, which kind of breaks off on the left side of the screen as opposed to a floating uh, option box on its own. So before we get started, I'll just show you briefly what it does. You see over here on the right side of my perspective view, my cursor has changed like a crosshair. When I click, a little red plus sign appears everywhere that I click. So what I'm doing is I'm placing individual particles in my scene and so it's a little bit easier to see hopefully I'll hide the grid and change my background color um, probably black would be easiest to see so my little red plus signs when I click so I'm placing particles one by one in my scene if I rotate my view you'll see they're all in a flat plane which we can uh, adjust with different options that we'll get to later but yeah, right now I'm just clicking and placing particles, and then when I'm done, I hit enter, and those red plus signs get replaced by little green dots, which are my particles. Before I hit enter, there are no particles in my scene yet. I'm just placing where the particles are going to be, and then after I hit enter, it finalizes the action of creating the particle, and it turns green like this. So while this particle ob object has, a, you know, a couple dozen particles in here. When I go into the outliner, go to window, outliner, you'll see there's only one particle object. The all of these particles together make up one particle object. See in my outliner, I have my cameras, perspective, top, front, and side. I have my default light sets, but then I have particle one, which is the particle object that I created with the particle tool. So no matter how many particles you click and add while using the particle tool once you hit enter you create a single particle object which is composed of all these individual particles that you can then affect with dynamics such as gravity and other such things so I'll delete this and go back to my particle tool and show you more things so the first option here in the particle tool settings is a particle name. You'll remember our particle object was called particle1. That's the default name that Maya gives our particle objects. You can give it a name on our own if we want to. So if I wanted to call this example particle, I can. And just name it here. So then when I click my particles around and hit enter, you'll see now in the outliner window outliner, I have example particle as opposed to particle1. So that just allows you to name the particle. I'll delete that. I'm not sure if the grid makes it easier or not to see. But you have to let me know. So you can click and add a particle at a time. But let's say you want to undo. You can't undo the entire operation until after you hit enter and finalize and create the little green dots. Uh, so once that's done, if you hit undo, it'll remove the particle. Let me go back to the tool, click some more. Let's say you don't want to undo the whole thing, you just want to undo your particle placement. So while the red uh, plus signs are visible, if you hit the backspace key, it will undo the particle placement in the order that you place them. So by hitting backspace, you can undo within the tools action. If you click a whole bunch of particles but you like them all except the first one and you want to change that one, what you have to do is hold the D key, D is in dog. So when I do that, I'm tapping the D key and the plus signs turn into little squares. Hold it down, then I can click and drag on any of these particles and move it. So if I don't like a particular particle's positioning, if I hold the D key, 
it'll allow me to edit the particles placement if I want this particle over here to be way over here on the left I can do that if I want to get rid of a particle but I don't want to keep pressing backspace until the one I want to get rid of is gone and then create new ones after the fact I can hold D and then click on a particle click it and then hit the delete key and it will delete that one if I want to get rid of this one over here click it delete key then let go of D and I can click more particles in and use backspace to reverse it so again that's just left clicking to add particles backspace to undo hold the D key to enter edit mode then you can click and drag these particles around or once you've clicked one you can hit the delete key while D is still held and delete it and then once you're all done you let go of D you have your little red plus signs you hit enter to finalize the action and create the final particle object like so. So we'll delete that. Go back to my particle tool options. So what conserve does is it affects a particle's relationship to other dynamic objects that are affecting a particle's velocity like gravity or a vortex manipulator or anything like that <laughs> where uh, a particle object is moving because of dynamics. The conserved value will adjust how those particles move from those dynamic forces. A conserved value of 1 will have a different result than a conserved value of 0. And we'll get back to that in a bit. So number of particles right now by default is 1. So when I click with the particle tool active, I'm placing one particle at a time. I can increase this to more particles per click. So let's just say for example 2. And hit enter. And when I, whenever I increase this number of particles value to more than one, you'll notice the maximum radius slider becomes available. Right now the maximum radius is zero. So whenever I click, visu visually I only see one little red plus sign being placed. But because my radius is zero, I'm actually placing two particles right on top of each other. And a good way of seeing this is when I hold the D key to edit my particle placement, I can click and drag one particle off of the other, like that. So clicking places two particles at the same time, hold down the D key, click and drag to move one off of the other. Or I can increase my maximum radius a little bit. Let's say round one. So over here on the right I'll click and now you'll see two particles are placed slightly separated by a value of 1.034 units. So by increasing this to say 10, and again my maximum radius is still the same amount, click, you'll notice a little clump of 10 particles all placed within that same radius. So that's the way you can click and place multiple particles and they're placed kind of randomly within that radius. And again hold down the D key and I can click and drag individual particles around or while D is held click a particle and delete it. So that's number of particles and maximum radius. So I'll hit enter since we have a lot of particles in our scene now and just delete this particle object and continue. You can choose to sketch particles with this checkbox. If I turn that on, you'll see a sketch interval of 5 by default. This still uses the number of particles and radius values, so I'm going to change this back to 1 and our maximum radius value grays out, meaning it's no longer applicable. So with a sketch interval of 5, I click and drag you'll see I'm placing particles in a long line and the spacing between them is based on the sketch interval and right now that value is 5. Hit enter you see I have a nice line of particles like this I'll delete it and we'll choose a sketch interval of say 20. Much larger interval, I click and drag now, you'll see a 
lot larger space between individual particles as I click and drag. And again, you can increase that even further, say 100. You get a lot more space between the particles as you drag. So you don't have to just click, click, click. You can just click and drag with sketch particles turned on and you can adjust the sketch interval. And you can do this while the tool is active. I've lowered my sketch interval now to around 20 and click and drag and within the same particle object now I have a new line with a different interval setting. So now I hit enter and I've created this particle object. I'll delete it, go back to my particle tool. That's with sketch particles turned on. So next we have create particle grid. So instead of sketching particles in a line or clicking individual particles at a time or individual clumps of particles at a time, you can create just a grid of particles with this trick box. So turn that on. We have particle spacing, which is similar to sketch interval, which gives you a, a spacing between particles. And then you can choose the placement, the, the placement of the grid with a cursor or with text fields. If you choose with text fields, then these uh, minimum corner and maximum corner XYZ values become available and with a cursor placement they are grayed out. Let's do it with the cursor first. When I click and then click hit enter it creates the grid like so. Let's do that again. I'll, I'll uh, show my scene grid just make it a little bit easier to see hopefully. So again placement with cursor you're placing one corner and then the other, I'll actually hide the grid I think, so this this corner placed and that corner placed, I hit enter and it creates a grid of particles between those two corners and the density of the grid is based on the particle spacing value which right now is 0.5 so if I delete this particle object and choose a spacing of say 2 click, click, enter you see now my grid is not nearly as dense. Go back to our particle tool options. So with text fields you're actually indicating with XYZ values if you have a specific area of where you want the grid to fill. So right now you see our X value is negative 9, Y of 0, Z of 6, maximum is x of 6, y of 0, z of negative 11. And with this option selected, if we click and hit enter, we get our grid placed at those coordinates. Delete that and go back. Now one thing you might notice is we have a y value with both of these settings and right now it's set to 0 for both, giving us a 2D grid of particles. We can increase the y value of one of these up to say 5. So with a y value of 0 for the minimum corner and a y value of 5 for the maximum corner, we're placing a 3D grid of particles. Because our y value down here is at 0 and our y value at the other corner was higher than that, it fills a cube space or volume with the particle grid instead of just a single plane of particles. And again the density is based on that particle spacing value. So let's delete this and choose a particle spacing of let's say a small value of 0.5 back to the default. Click, enter, much denser uh, cube of particles or volume of particles. It might actually look odd in the YouTube video because of dithering effects. But we have a lot of particles in our scene now with that uh, density value, or that uh, particle spacing value I should say. Let's delete that and go back here. So when you're placing with the cursor you might think you're limited to a 2D grid. That's not necessarily the case. If I delete this I'm going to turn on my uh, background colors again in my grid and press the space bar and you'll see I have my perspective in the, the right corner here top view, front and side views. 
back to my particle tool. So I'm creating with the cursor. If I click in my perspective view, you'll see the red plus sign appear in other views. If I go to my side view and click up higher than that, I'm going up in the Y value. And don't forget, you can also, you can still press the D key and move these points around. So I'm going to go back to my top view, click and drag this point over here, like so. So back to my perspective, I have my this point here, the first corner point placed there, and it's at the zero Y value, and the second corner point placed over here, up in the air. When I hit enter, it creates the grid in the same way as using the XYZ values with text fields option for placement. So you're not limited to a 2D plane with cursor placement. I might want to increase my particle spacing so it's not nearly as dense. So I'll do that again. I just click in the scene and it places one on the ground plane. Go to my side view and place one up in the air like so. However, they're aligned like this. So if I do press enter right now, I'll, lit I'll literally get a 2D vertical plane of, of particles, which can be useful for if that's what you're wanting to do. So if they're lined up like that, you're going to get a 2D plane of vertical particles placed in the grid. Let's delete that. Actually, that spacing is a little bit high. Let's go back to like 1.5 or so. So with that point placed, I'll go to a side view, click up in the air above a Y value of zero, so up in the air somewhere. And now with a diagonal placement like this, hit enter. And it will create a 3D grid of particles. And I think that's essentially how the particle tool works. Now let's go back to that conserve value. Remember our conserve value right now is one. Let's close this. And actually let's make a slightly less dense uh, particle grid just because it might be hard to see in the video I think. So increase this particle spacing. Let's go back at three. I guess I thought that was a little high but maybe not. And let's just place with text fields. Click and enter. So now we have our quick 3D grid of particles. Let's control A and go into the attributes and choose our particle shape tab and here you see our conserve value right now is, is one. So this is how you can adjust that conserve value after you've placed your particles. And we're not going to go into too much detail here for particle options. We can go into that in a different video. But our conserve value we'll look at. And again, conserve changes how a particle is affected by dynamic forces. So we'll need to apply a dynamic force. And we'll have future videos going over all these dynamic forces in more detail, but for now we'll just apply a quick gravity. So with the particle selected, I go to Fields, Gravity. And in the options, I'll just reset the settings, make sure it's default settings, and hit Create. You'll see now I have my particles turn pink or purple, and I have this gravity object in my scene now. So to see the particles move, I have to actually play an animation. So I'm going to go to Display, UI Elements. I break this off. And the UI Elements we want to activate are the Time Slider and the Range Slider. So this gives us our animation playback controls at the bottom of the screen. Close that. And before we hit Play, we have to do a couple little things when dealing with particles to make the particles uh, render accurately when we play the animation. So over here in the far right, of my range slider. I'll click this little white box. Hopefully that's not cut off in the video. But it opens this, the preferences menu and goes straight to the time slider options. And I want to make sure playback speed is play every frame like so. And it is for mine, but if it's not for yours, make sure you set that to play every frame and hit save. And then we're going to increase our maximum frames instead of being uh, 24 frames visible with 48 frame maximum. Let's just increase the visible frames up to say 500 and hit enter. So now we have a much longer period of time that the animation can play. So now I hit play and see what happens. Let me hide my grid and 
and let's find a background color that works best. I guess black works as long as I'm selecting the particles so they glow green. Let's hit play and see what happens. Whoa, they dropped. They dropped quick. Let me select my gravity. And again, we don't want to go into too much detail with how the gravity works. But we're going to change the magnitude, which is how strong the gravity is. We'll change this down to, like, let's say, 1, a really small value, just so we can see some movement. Still pretty quick. How about I find some. How about I find the settings that work best without wasting your time and I'll come back. Okay, so what I've done is I've duplicated my original particle grid and placed it over to the side. So now I have the first particle grid here and now my second particle grid. My first particle grid I have a conserved value of 1, which is a default value. The second particle grid I have a conserved value of 0.1, which is much smaller. And they're both being affected by the same gravity field. So with both particle grids selected so you can see them better, I'll hit play. Alright, so you can see how that conserve value affects the two grids. The first grid falls very rapidly. The second grid is falling, but much slower. So that conserve value is what's affecting the different speeds of falling based on that gravity dynamic field. So that's the conserve value when you're dealing with the particle shape or particle tool. So I believe that should be everything about the particle tool. Uh, let me know if I've forgotten anything. I think I've covered everything pretty well. Uh, again, it's a particle tool which you can find in the dynamics menu sets under particles, particle tool, right here. So this has been Michael for the Meyer Tool Belt. Please subscribe, like, comment. I definitely appreciate all the feedback. And if you have any requests for future videos, let me know. And again, thanks for watching.